Yep. <laughs> right there. 100% true though, man. Deadly, deadly weight fish right there. Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? We are back with another video today. To be honest with you guys, was not planning on filming a video today. It is my final day um, out here in North Dakota. And I probably would have left yesterday, to be honest with you, because I hate filming kind of like at the same place too many days in a row. But I'm here because I have a seminar coming day after tomorrow. So naturally, I just have to be here another day. And you know, if I'm gonna be here another day, we might as well fish and film, right? Sitting in a hotel room editing when you're one mile away from this lake is not a feasible option for myself. But um, I really, you know, so the last, let's kind of jog backwards for a quick second. Two days ago, showed up here, caught an absolute mountain of fish, trolling and kind of blind casting the brand new Kalen's search bait. Yesterday, kind of mixed it up, did a little bit of search bait fishing, to trolling to kind of find some fish, and then I casted the jerk minnow. Today we got real flat, calm conditions, which basically never happens out here in North Dakota, right? So I think what we're gonna do is just get up on the bow and just hunt some of these fish down with some the Hummingbird Mega Live. And it's a super effective way to fish when it's flat, calm like this, because a lot of times fish aren't willing to like chase a bait a super long way. So a lot of times you get up there, you get in some good spots, you weasel the live around, you, you kind of pinpoint some cast, and it can be a pretty good option. We might start out kind of snap jigging and kind of see where the day goes from there, but that's kind of the plan. Maybe we'll go into some good tweaks that you can do to the search bait as well, as far as like rigging goes, speed goes, all that kind of stuff. Cause I'll link this down in the description as I have in the last couple of videos. This bait has blown my mind how like universally effective it is over the course of the last few days. So um, stay tuned. That's kind of the plan. That's what we're going to be doing. Check out the search bait the link down below after the video is done. But let's jump up on the bow, start running some mega live, and hopefully catch a pile of North Dakota walleyes today. Got him right there. <laughs> Did you guys see that fish follow up on the live? That was cool, man. That was cool. Put the old search bait on for a second there. You could just see that fish was kind of pressed into bottom. Threw the search bait out past him, reeled it back by him, and you could just see him all of a sudden start moving towards the boat. There we go. There's a nice walleye right there. We'll take him like that, man. We'll take him like that, and he absolutely chase that thing down let's go ahead and scoop them up here real quick it's about as good as it gets right there man about as good as it gets and we're just kind of going down a, a big shelf here running the boat in about 10 feet of water give or take a couple feet and we'll dial them in on exactly what they want but that one definitely wanted the old search bait right there that's about as good of a Example of how valuable Mega Live is as it gets, right? There's two things that are very important when you're fishing off Mega Live that it gives you a huge advantage of. One, where is the fish at? Two, engaging that fish's interaction. We got to see both those kind of in perfect sync right there on that little sequence. We'll see you later, buddy. Oh, yeah, it's a good fish. right there fish on you guys see that one just there's a couple just way out there about as far as you could see and i just kind of launched one out past them engaged the reel boom nice walleye on on the old search bait one thing you see on days like this especially in like more stained systems that fish relate to bottom a lot tighter so you don't always 
see them way up high on the graph. Now on the flip side, you get in a lot of like my kind of bread and butter lakes, like in northern Wisconsin, gin clear type systems. And it'll almost make fish float a lot of times in the water. What I mean by that is they'll come like way up off bottom and just soak in some of that heat. But a lot of times systems that have a little bit of color to the water though, they'll, they'll snug down to the bottom for some reason. Ask me why, don't know. That's just kind of what I've seen happen. right there that is how you want to do it right there feel like a nice fish too I thought I landed a little close to him but you know that thing kind of spins on the way down the old search bait so a lot of times they'll bite it when it's falling I've noticed this is feeling like a real good fish oh yeah look at him we're putting it together man putting it together on one of these kind of not so great looking days right talking real quiet because your voice just carries so ridiculously far out. I'll go ahead and scoop them up real quick. Come here, buddy. There we go. Look at him. I'm fishing the old gold, gold pink clown today, which has been pretty good to me. Oh, he's angry, he's angry. Get you popped off, buddy. There we go, man. That is a nice fish right there. We'll take those all day long just like that, huh? He's super nice. Let's let him go. Bait back up and send her back out. See you later, mama. Let's do that again. It's one of the nice parts about the search bait is you can kind of manipulate it and tweak it a lot of different ways, right? We're fishing just fake crawlers on here today. But you can put, let's say you're just gonna fish a small leech. You can go ahead and just run like a small octopus hook. Let's say you want to run the bigger slow death in a big crawler. You can do that. Let's say you want to run a plastic on there. You can just run the single hook like I am. And the important thing is that when you thread this on there, kind of thread it on a little bit wonky. Can you guys kind of see how that's like sitting a little bit kind of cockeyed on there? Like if that was a jig and a plastic, you'd probably try to fix that, right? But what it does, what it does in the water is it kind of gives it this whipping action as you reel it see if we can get kind of a close-up with that zoomed in or something but it kind of whips that tail around a lot you can see how pretty that thing looks that's going to help you get a lot of bites when you're trying to fish like an artificial on here all right you guys want to take a quick second and kind of do some information here on the kaolin's search bait the bait that's pretty much been catching just almost every single fish i've caught out here the last several days very powerful bait and i'm glad we could kind of showcase it on the youtube channel but it's a solid tungsten head with a rattle in there you can probably hear the rattle it's just kind of a nice faint little knocky rattle right kind of the perfect sound and it's a tungsten head which is important because it keeps the whole presentation a lot more compact the second you start getting too big and bulky is the second you can kind of stop catching fish right so it's full tungsten head comes with a slow death and a straight shank it's got kind of this custom spinner design which spins just incredibly freely and easily on there so really whether the bait's like going slow or falling or you're kind of speeding it up and hopping it that blade's kind of always swimming in the water right now today we're obviously running a fake crawler or a fake leech or whatever just a piece of plastic on there so we'll thread this onto the slow death hook most time and i'll just get it up on there enough to kind of cover the swivel if that makes sense so we'll thread it on about to there and then i'll thread that up on just like this so kind of it's got kind of like that funky turn in it you want that that's what's going to keep this whole thing kind of rotating and when you thread it up just almost all the way over the swivel like that it keeps that whole presentation very nice and compact the other thing it does it keeps this hook back we all know a lot of times when fish eat spinner rigs they'll come up behind it and kind of grab it like that right so because of this, even if we have a fish kind of touch it back here, not really a need for a stinger hook on there. So pretty simple um, kind of operation right there. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do to this to kind of tweak with it. Let's just say you're going to run like a small leech on here, right? You're going to go down to the quarter and you're going to get really shallow and you're going to run a smaller leech on here. 
literally all you got to do is just take this split ring open it up thread that split ring or thread that bigger slow death hook off get just kind of like your normal you know number two octopus hook like that right there and we'll just put this right back on now the whole presentation is going to be a little bit more compact like if you even if you're going to run like a fat head or something on here right a minnow it's this whole presentation is designed to basically be able to fish equally as effectively with a plastic or a live bait or whatever it might be so there there it is with just kind of that smaller octopus hook on there right so if you're going to take a leech which we got some right in here basically all you'd have to do is grab your leech out we don't have any leeches like that i like fishing and if i can get away with not fishing live bait i always do but basically take your leech Whoa. take your leech and thread it right on to the hook like this now i'll kind of intentionally try to thread it on there a little ways and i'll do the same thing i'll push it up over that first split ring so that it looks something like this right here now once you put this in the water the whole thing kind of comes to life this leech gets a little bit longer like that the whole thing is kind of rotating and spinning all at the same time so obviously this you can still see the hooks plenty far back still nice and compact you can cast down a weed edge you can cast it down a rock bar you can cast it kind of wherever you can get on the live and cast it at specific fish or you can just cast it behind the boat and catch fish all of those things have worked very well so you can kind of do a lot with this bait you can swap out hooks you got the heavier one the big one you control it you can cast it and that in my mind is one of the reasons i was so excited to start fishing with this and kind of start doing a lot of the playing around with it we have so that's kind of that. Let's catch a couple more fish for sure. It's just such a perfect day out. It, I don't. I don't want to stop fishing really. Yep. <laughs> oh man. Dude, are we having fun or what, man? Wow. They are all about the search bait. This is feeling like a really good fish. There was just one out there. And I kind of made the pitch out to him. And pretty much landed it right on his dome. Started reeling it. Fish kind of started moving. This is feeling really good. Oh yeah, it's a real nice walleye. Very nice walleye right here, man. That is what I'm talking about. Loading up the rod. Search bait, you definitely want to fish on a longer, limber rod. And the, like, let that, you want that rod to kind of load up a little bit. Ideal rod would be like a 7.3, 7.6, and uh, a medium light action. Fast, medium light, fast action. We'll get this guy in here. He's a big old fatty, man. Big old fatty on the search bait. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. That is what we like to see right there. Oh, 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 he's ours. <laughs> that, my friends, is a good time right there. That is exactly what we wanted to accomplish today. And there we go, man, look at that. That is easily the most versatile bait I've ever fished in my life. You can cast it, troll it, sharpshoot it at fish. You can't do that with many baits. That is a good one right there. You can put live bait on it, put plastics on it, leech stuff, crawler stuff, minnow stuff. It's kind of an interesting tool to fish. And that is, that's the reward right there, man. Let's let that guy go. That is too cool. Wow. See you later. He's gonna play dead for a second. Watch her bolt. You notice some of these fish will do this, right? Second I touch them, there she goes back down. <laughs> oh man, I'm loving it. This is a good time.
like a real good one. Oh, there we go. Now we got audio. Oh, I saw that fish following. He kind of just, you could see that one just all of a sudden went fast through the school. I kind of, jeez, man. I kind of tried to cast farther than the fish normally, and I did. And then the second I kind of brought it through, you could tell all of a sudden he was engaging with the bait, and just there was one that just started shooting through the school. <laughs> there we go. Let's coop you up, buddy. Oh, no. Tangled net, tangled net. Come here. There we go. There we go. Well, that is 100% the deal right there, man. Search bait and search and destroy type of fishing, I guess you could say, with the search bait. Kind of looking down these big flats, waiting until you see a fish or two, making that pinpoint and cast at them. And then it's as simple as reel the bait in. Obviously, you can kind of like manipulate it, you know, kind of stall it, start it, speed it up, slow it down kind of as much as you want. But uh, it really couldn't be any simpler style of fishing that is for sure you guys are probably getting sick of me saying it, it sound like a broken record like oh yep search bait another one in love with this bait 100 percent true though man deadly deadly way to fish right there there's just another perfect example of that <laughs> let's let that guy go man that is i mean i'm having an absolute blast out here and as you can see if we do a quick pan there's two boats about two and a half miles away Cannot see a boat going that way. Oh, there's one boat way over there. How are you gonna beat it, dude? This is this is a fun style of fishing for sure. But I think we're gonna close out our journey in North Dakota right here. Um, it's probably about 11 o'clock in the middle of the morning right now. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this little trip through the Dakotas. Um, I mainly came out here to follow seminars and obviously you guys know me, the warrior is coming with me wherever I go. So had to do some fishing along the way. But appreciate you guys watching this one. Seminars that are coming up that are not sold out that I know of. Billings, Montana, August 1st. There's another one uh, that's at the Shields. There's another Sioux Falls, South Dakota one coming up. I wanna say somewhere around late June or after the 4th of July. One of those two, cannot remember off the top of my head, but that's what's happening. So thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it a lot. I'm gonna go back in the hotel get a good night's sleep tonight for once, maybe do some editing and uh, get on down the road tomorrow. But appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. I'll see you next time.